Four days after Christmas, just this past year, uh, I was in Fresno, California, and if you guys aren't familiar, it's in the valley. And uh, I was up there for my cousin's, for my uncle's wedding. And after the wedding, um, my cousins invited me to come over to their apartment. And, and, and we were hanging out, having a good time, and I think uh, my cousins, you know, he, he wanted to experiment with some drugs. And being with you know everyone, I felt safe. I, honestly, I felt safe uh, doing it with my cousins. So he busted out a bag of mushrooms. And if you guys ever seen this, it's it's like a hallucinogen. It impairs your uh, your uh, what's that word? Your visuals and stuff. So I took it, and um, about an hour or two into it, my cousin. Uh, began to hallucinate and he was convinced that we were ghosts. So to combat these feelings, he grabbed a pair of knives in the kitchen and he chased us. And uh, you know, I was hallucinating too, so I thought it was a bad dream. And he chased us and by the time I knew it, I saw him with the knives and I ran out of the apartment um, not knowing that I got stabbed twice and I got sliced on my wrist. So here's like a uh, little okay. Um, but I made it outside safely, and I didn't know I was cut until, yeah, until I made until uh, I made it to the car, and that's where the paramedics came. He came to get me, and from there, uh, from there, I was rushed to the hospital. I didn't know that I got stabbed in the back, and uh, from what I saw, I, I can only see the uh, scar from my arm, and. Um, after that, I was rushed into the hospital. It was like a scene from a from a movie, you know. Uh, when I was in the paramedics, I can remember one guy just screaming in my the right side of my face, you know, "Stay awake, stay awake, uh, just don't close your eyes." And I was in and out. It was hazy. I didn't know what to feel. I felt confused. It was my cousin that stabbed me, but I would, I didn't feel any pain. All I could think about was, you know, wh where are these guys at you now? And uh, from there, I was rushed to the hospital, and I got to the hospital about 15 minutes later. And when I was exported from the the truck into you know, to get to the ER, I remember my dad running to me and asking me, "Andrew, are you okay?" And from there, that moment right there inspired me to fight a little, and um, it all turned it all turned around for me. I didn't I didn't think that it was a dream anymore, and Getting pushed into the uh, to the ER, I can see uh, about 15 nurses waiting for me, and that's when I started to realize it wasn't real or it wasn't fake anymore. It seemed like a nightmare, but just seeing everyone uh, throwing the IVs and stuff, it was real. It was real, and um, I started to come back to life. Started to come back to reality, and I think one thing that. I can compare to Miss uh, Mrs. Smith's experience was that you know I was at the mercy of uh, the doctor's you know the doctor's hands and um, I can remember from that night I had a pair, I had a pair of new shoes a pair of new Nikes and I bled all over them and I was mad because I got them for Christmas <laughs> and uh, that's the one thing that bugged me the whole time <laughs> so. When the nurse came in, she said, you know, she was asking me, how are you? And I was like, man, they're, they're brand new, you know? And so she didn't know, but um, she, actually, she actually knows someone that works at the Viejas uh, outlet down in San Diego, down in Meese County, and that's where I got the shoes from. So she hooked me up with a new pair, which is kind of awesome. <laughs> but aside from everything, the experience I can take away from that was, you know, uh, the nurse made me feel at home. She made me feel relaxed, and um, even though the shoes didn't mean anything, they meant a lot to me. I came from a good friend, and uh, just made me feel at ease, really. And I think I, from this experience, I can take uh, what I can take from it is uh, I took it. I took it as a blessing in disguise. It made me realize who's important to me, who I should surround myself with, and uh, just being careful about the decisions you make in life. You know, uh, every day we've dealt with you know, peer pressure, 
going out, maybe having a few drinks, and we never think we never think consciously about the consequences, really. So I just wanted to leave that with you guys. I leave. I wanted to leave a question for you guys to ask yourself: you know, if if you knew the decision, or if, if you knew the decision, if you knew the consequence behind every decision you made, would you still make the same decision? So. I think that's uh, something to look something to look towards and uh, really pay close attention to. I mean, really, I just did it for the high, and well, it wasn't that important for me. Like, I can see the disappointment in my dad's face. That's something that you know, for me, I didn't want to and never wanted to see. And seeing my mom turn the corner and seeing her son on the bed. Uh, just seeing her break down just killed me, and um, something I don't want my parents to ever see ever again. I never heard my dad cry like that, so uh, it's, it's been fine though. I've been I've been better. I've been involved in this power mentor with Kevin, and uh, it's changed my life. I took a lot from this incident, and it made me mature in a lot of ways. Where um, I just surround myself with better people, like-minded people, and. Um, just really focus on the important things, you know, getting through school and finding the right career. And I think Kevin's uh, been helping me out with a lot of that. So, thank you. I, I got a question. So what happened to your cousin? Was he charged or? He was charged on domestic violence and assault with a deadly weapon. He gets sentenced on Tuesday. Uh, my father's a deputy sheriff, so he doesn't in yeah, most cases like this, he he's probably not going to he's probably not going to do any time. He's probably just going to do some uh, drug classes, rehab classes, and that's about it. But we won't know until Tuesday. How's the interaction with the family now? Well, it hasn't caused any friction between the family, but you know, a lot of the Hmong community. I'm I'm Hmong, by the way, but the Hmong community is really tight as to different clans, different families, and. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the different clans, different families can kind of look down on my family, but um, I mean, we don't. I don't take it to heart, and I don't blame them. But it was pure accident, and uh, I'm. I forgive my cousin, to be honest. Um, I know he won't forgive himself. It's something that haunts him every day. I talk to him. I try to talk to him at least once a week to see how he's doing, but I can tell it's really bugging him. It's something that he can't even sleep with the light on or this light off. So I think he's really haunted by the whole experience himself. Um, he, the way he felt when he was on, when he was hallucinating, was he, he started to accept his death, and um, he thought that we were ghosts trying to get him. And I think he tried to fight us off, fight off the ghosts. So that's that's how it turned out, and that's how it went. Crazy. We had this happen? Four days after Christmas, so roughly two, this year, yeah. about a month, a month and a half, two months ago. So this, this year? This past year, yeah. Just this past December. Still new. <laughs> what are you studying? What am I studying? Yeah. Um, I aspire to be an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, just because I've been in a trauma. <laughs> So because I've been in the trauma room and I've seen what they do, and I think you know, just touching people's lives, I think that's that's what inspired me to help the next generation. Really. I just, from this whole incident, it was just really like bad decisions, bad choices. But we're all dealt with like choices every day. Just just make the right decision. Uh, just, it's hard to say that because you know you don't know, you don't really know the consequence. But just be mindful make the sensible choice. That's all I can really say. I'm glad to just still be here to stand like this. It's been a blessing this past few, this past month and a half. So I've been taking a lot from it. Uh, Kevin's told you guys that uh, I went to Google with him like a couple weeks ago and just opening my eyes to different opportunities. I think it's, it's been a blessing. So 